you guys, Sean T. Phillips with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean video today. Thank you to go out today since this came out today, seeing if they're on sale. Uh, it's always like, you know, a tongue twister in the beginning when I say, see what things came out today, see what things are on sale. <laughs> and it always runs together like that. I tried to slow it down last Tuesday, but people were like, oh no, I like it when it's fast and, you know, runs together like that. But, you know, going to go out today and see what things came out today, see, see what things are on sale, like I was saying. Uh, but today, though, you know, new release-wise, there's not a ton of things coming out. There's a handful of things. Uh, the, the main big thing coming out today was the film Nightmare alley uh, also though i believe for the first time ever the godfather trilogy is coming out on 4k uh, that one comes out today uh, you know as well there's also a handful of other like indie things i believe that are releasing today uh, i might not go to all the same spots i might go to the the one thrift store that i have not been to in forever and maybe look in like a dollar tree and then you know of course still go to Wal uh, walmart and best buy and stuff like that as well there's a couple different spots that I haven't been to in a while. Uh, but also, though, at the end of this video, it's going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews. Some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed, if you guys have seen them, what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And I want to let you guys know, though, one really cool thing today, though, the uh, newest teaser is out for the film which I directed, Amityville Karen. Uh, I, I put a link below, though, if you guys would like to check out the teaser trailer for it. And feel free to leave comments under the trailer and everything. And the um, there's going to be a limited edition Blu-ray that's going to be coming from SRS Cinema. And I'm going to let you guys know as soon as the pre-order is up for that. It should be very, very soon for that one. And then there will be a wide release DVD one that will, you know, will be available everywhere online, Amazon, all that kind of stuff as well. But the limited edition Blu-ray one that's going to be going up soon and there's like going to be a behind the scenes documentary on that one and i'm going to be doing a commentary for that one you know as well and also too want to make sure to let you guys know too that the newest film uh, mistletoe massacre the film is i'm co-directing with lauren francesca which i've been crowdfunding for for the last like three weeks now it's now down to the last five days in the campaign. So if any of you guys are interested in helping out in the film, like I said, it's the last five days and there's a number of different perks on the project, which I've talked about in the past too. There's a lot of different ones, like you guys can be a producer on the project. There's, you know, producer credits. Uh, there's perks to have a, you know, um, your, um, to be a, a video blogger in the film, which you guys could, you know, or a newscast in the film that would be film stuff that you guys can shoot from home. Uh, there's also a, a perk on there to have your channel uh, promoted in the film. Uh, that's what's one, the ones called have your channel in the film so a number of different ones and ways to help there's also special thanks credits that you guys can get which go on the on imdb as well as the film's end credits as well there's also the cool duder special thanks credit which i'll have a link for as well if you guys wanted that one you guys can only get that one from the particular link below but anyway though guys like i said thanks again for all the support on this film it's you know like I, I really appreciate everything so much and i really cannot wait to shoot this new one we start shooting in now just a like i think it's like a little less than a month now so really really can't wait but this is a Walmart though that I don't go to this one very often. I haven't been here in a really, really long time. And when it comes to like the um, movie section though, this is one of the ones that kind of has like a, one of the slightly smaller ones. So there's not as much, you know, stuff in here. So we'll head back there and see. You always have to be careful of all these carts. Everyone's always hauling those carts. And like, I'm always so afraid that one day that's gonna crush my foot. So let's see now what they have in here today. Like I said, this is one of the ones that has a slightly smaller section than some of the other ones. So let's see. I don't see anything new for today, though. Let's see. That's like, that's not, I shouldn't be surprised by that, though. That's sort of an everyday occurrence. This one, though, I'm still going to go to the other location, but no, I'm definitely not seeing anything new there. Let's see. This one might have been, I don't know. I think this was actually last week, Tale of Two Guns. I think that was a couple weeks back. Let's see. I don't see anything new here. They definitely might have expanded the section a little bit, but not as much. Let's see. I, I don't see anything mixed in here new. As far as I can tell, it seems to be all the same stuff. These are the Easter ones that I've shown before. Let's check the only other place where there could be anything else new. And like I said, I know there wasn't a lot of stuff today, but there definitely was going to be a few things. Um, this one may have been today, and I'll be reviewing this one next week. I got a copy of this one from the UK. This is an interesting movie, this one, Incarnation. Uh, this was just one of those movies, too, that also really ins just ins sort of inspired me, just because I could tell they made this one really, really low budget, and just for what you can kind of do for really small amount of budget, and, you know, for this one. But I thought it was interesting. I, I, I thought it was kind of a strange movie for Tay Diggs to be doing, I thought, because it was very, very, very low budget. 
But, you know, it was interesting. I, I, I do feel like Michael Madsen was, just came in in his own wardrobe for this movie because I don't know. I, I Believe me, I'm the culprit for that as well. I've had actors come in their own wardrobe, which are a little wacky sometimes. <laughs> but I just go, ah, it works. Let's see, though, um, uh, what else there is in here. And these ones, too, a lot of people have been mentioning this to me. Uh, I showed this the one, I think, last Tuesday. They have been starting to have these VHS slipcover ones on DVDs. And there's a couple ones in here. I see one of the other ones they have is the Meatballs one with the VHS slipcover. And I think someone mentioned that there was maybe, like, two other ones. Let's see. There's the Terminator one. I showed that one. I don't see offhand, though, any other, like, of the... Oh, wait a minute. Is this Terminator 2? Yeah, I can't. I don't see offhand any other ones, but I do know, as far as I've been told, there are some other ones, you know, as well. But taking a look here, though, I don't see anything else. We're head though to the other uh, Walmart, though, and that one should have out the stuff. This one is kind of like the one I normally go to by my house. That one area where it's like doesn't really have a lot of stuff. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, hopefully the other one has this stuff out. But like I said, it's not a big release day, so I'm not expecting a ton today. But still, I know there was going to be a couple things. Into the Dollar Tree we go. And I haven't been in here in a while. Like I used to, I was always like kind of up on doing the dollar DVDs and actually is some right in the front here. So let's see, you know, what's in here and everything. But I haven't like looked in a long time. A mother, woman, inebriated. I'll go through these kind of quick or it won't take forever. High Moon. This one, it's like a Western one. I don't think I have that one. Anytime there's one, and then, oh, this one has a slipcover for it. I definitely would get the slipcover one. What else was here? Let me just put this right here. Vehicle 19. We've seen that one a lot. Evil Little Things. I know I've seen that one before. Lions and Lambs. Wendell. Eight Heads in a Tuffle Bag. And this is the Walmart version of Satanic Panic. This is the one just called Panic. This is a really good movie. I really, I really like this one. This is one I would definitely... If you guys find this one, definitely get this one. Uh, Xenophobia. Barge People was pretty good. Lars and the Real Girl was good. I think I've seen that one before. Investigation 13. I don't think I got that one. Like I said, anytime it's like a weird horror one that I don't have, I usually get them. Kanto. I have seen some people finding restricted areas the last while or two in here. The one that me and Danny, the Sinner Stalker, in at the beginning of. Mastermind, 21 and over, abducted. I think that was, I don't know, that was Asylum one. Art of the Dead. Movie 43. I watched this one again, and like this is one of those movies. Like looking at it now, it's like sort of hilarious in a weird way. And it was like I think these directors and everybody was sort of trolling Hollywood with this and getting these stars to do the most cringy, embarrassing things imaginable. Because when you really think about it, it was obviously something like that was going on with this movie. This was sort of almost like malicious what they were doing to these celebrities, getting them to do this. And I really wonder what they paid them, you know, for some of these because they were so incredibly weird. If you look at them now. Let's see. Because I watched it again recently. The, this one, The Redeemed. I don't, I've never seen that one. Luther, Don Juan. Let's see what's this one. Penance. Oh, this, this is a crazy one to see this one in here. This was actually pretty good. This is one of the original ones, too. I remember when I saw like a movie that had lots of like cameos and stuff like that. What kind of gave me like the idea for the movies that I do, like to how to get people in films and stuff like that. Michael Rooker, that's somebody that I'd love to get at some point in a film. I'd have to do a SAG movie, though, to do it, but he would be amazing to get. But I, I always get Jimmy, uh, James of All, in here, so that's cool. But no, this is really pretty good. This is a weird one to see, too. This Gus Van Sant, when it was opened, is it is a disc in here? It looks like it's still in here, but for a dollar, this is pretty good. Uh, Paranoid Park. This was a pretty decent one for a dollar. Let's see. Spree, that was really, really good as well. This is definitely would recommend you guys check that one out. We'll check over in the actual section, too, to see uh, if there's any other movies. Because, like, I think there might be more down in here. Let's see. I see, like, oh, that's like the... Let's take a look. Usually, like, in the electronics area or so, or so is where they would have more of them if they, if they do have any. So this is, like, a bunch of books shoved down here. Sometimes they would put the movies down here as well let's just figure out where the electronics is just to make sure there isn't any other ones just before i go that i don't want to miss over because i'm going to try and start doing the um the dollar tree ones again like in the standalone videos and all of that stuff again i've just gotten so busy and so like uh with the movies and stuff like that i just i've been thinking about that 
so much that it's like hard to think about anything else sometimes. Let's see. Where are that is that electronic section? I don't see that. Maybe it's down. I don't see it there. I think it might be down. Maybe they don't have that section anymore. Like, or they changed it. Because, yeah, I definitely, I think they may have changed that section around. Because I definitely don't see movies in another spot, as far as I can tell. Yeah, so in there, though, I end up getting that uh, Paranoid Park one. And the disc is in there, though. It's just like the wrapping was off of it. And then I got the, um, that Investigation 13, which I don't think I bought that one in the past. I can't remember for sure if I might have got it at Walmart when it came out. And then I got the High um, Moon movie. Another one that I don't think I got originally. But now I'm probably going to head to the um, the one thrift store, which I have not been to in, I don't know, probably like over a year or so. We'll see. if it's Hopefully it's not like crazy busy. Sometimes it's like impossible to park. We'll see, you know, fingers crossed. And then we're going to head to the other Walmart, though, and hopefully that one will have uh, the new releases and stuff, though. We will see, though. Into the Valley Thrift Store we go. And I don't think I've been in here, like I was saying, for like, oh, I think it's been, I don't know, probably a, a year or so. Let's see, though. Like I said, I have no idea what to expect in here or anything. I so we'll, I don't need this, right? Let's see, though, what the movie section looks like now. There's usually lots of people over here, though, so we shall see, though. But it definitely looks like there's a lot of stuff here that seems to be pretty full up and everything. The one thing I hate, though, is the way they have this laid out, it's right in the shoe section. So it's always, like, shoe fiascos over here. So you always have to, like, squeeze by the, the big popular shoe area. So that's the only thing I, I dislike about this, the way it's laid out. Some Chuck Norris set here. Luckily enough, there doesn't seem to be any, like, loud music or anything like that in here. So that's good. Usually, though, when I'm in here, I, like, pass over something really good and, like, miss it. But everything in here, the DVDs are $1.99 and then double records $2.99, otherwise marked. So I guess they're single marked and stuff like that for like the TV ones and everything. Like I said, it has been a long time. You always have to check the bottoms down in here. I mean, every sometimes you see stuff that's really different. Like, I definitely don't see this one. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't see it, I always look them up. But there's some stuff that you see that are super common that, you know, you just know... You know, you see a million times over. And, and so it's weird, too, how certain movies like become, like, the stereotypical ones to always see. I don't know how. It's, like, almost like there's certain movies that everybody in the world bought. You know what I mean? It was, like, this thing. Like, I got to buy this one. Yeah, so far, though, nothing different. Not a lot of Blu-rays. Let's see. Royal Wedding. Star Wars. Just a full-frame one. Here's some TV. I saw one Blu-ray in here. Oh, here's a couple. They have a couple Star Trek ones. They came from Big Lots. Harry Potter. Let's see. Oh yeah, here's a few more Blu-rays down here too. I don't know what this thing is. Um, oh, some like, religious thing. Like someone put in here. Let's see. <laughs> Rio, Monsters Inc., Shrek. So there are a few Blu-rays. Let's see, let's check down here too. Elvira. Yeah, nothing like it'd be amazing to find something really rare and out of print. You know, I haven't seen anything like that in a really long time. But that would definitely be exciting again. Because like I said, I haven't really in like the longest time that I can think of found anything really, really rare. Like I like look stuff like this you always want to look up, but you never know. Yeah, but just got out of there and nothing really, you know, interesting in there. I went through all the stuff and looked and didn't really see anything really like that different or out of print or anything. You never know though, like this location, like I said, I have in the past found a couple really, really good things, but it's been such a long time since I found like those like extremely rare, like under wraps kind of movies and stuff like that. You know, that was like under wraps was one of the rarest ones I found or things like Camp Cucamonga, you know, all that type of stuff. I haven't found anything like that in so long. So hopefully at some point I find like a really good out of print thing again. Into the second Walmart we go. Hopefully this one, fingers crossed, has the stuff out. We will see though. 
All right, so we're gonna see what's new here. And you know, at first glance, I'm not seeing a whole lot of things. I am seeing, I do see Dexter New Blood. I, so I do see this stuff. I do see Nightmare Alley. So Dexter New Blood, that was one of the ones that came out today. You know, the newest um, rendition of the Dexter series. But they, they, I don't remember how many years it was off the air that they brought it back for this one. And then Nightmare Alley, which I still need to watch this one. Uh, this is one, for some reason, I thought this actually came out like two weeks ago. And I don't know why I thought that. I know this one is on like HBO Max, and I think it's also might might be on Hulu too. But I know for sure HBO Max, so I'll definitely watch that one before I get it. But I'm sure I probably like it though. I just don't. I'm just not 100 percent certain that I will. Like I have to. I want to. I always like the Mount Gamel del Toro's films, so I probably will like it. But let me know in the comments below too, though, if you, if it's worth you know a blind buy for sure for this one because it's 24.99, and and like like I said, I probably would rather get this this um, 4K because it has a slip cover. I really dislike some of these things that, you know, without the slip covers. I don't know how to explain it. You know, it just sort of seems like they're missing some. But see how hard it is to put these back? Let's see. Um, but other than that, though, uh, Vikings, this season two, uh, sorry, sorry, season six, volume two, this might have been today. I never really watched this show. Uh, I never was really honestly into, like, Viking-type things or anything like that. For some reason, I never really liked those type of movies. And I don't know why. It just never was, like, I can't really think of any, like, Viking movies that I ever really liked. Let's see. Um, other than that, though, I'm trying to see if there's anything else here today. Because I thought there was a couple horror things that I saw saw that were coming out today some smaller indie ones but maybe that was like next week or so let's see though in, in, in this area is where usually there would be some random things mixed in uh, let's see I'm not seeing a, enough much because there was a lot last week and that might be kind of why because you know um, you know dream a little dream was last week and I, th I, I thought this was last Tuesday but it was actually like uh, two weeks before I ended up ordering the blu-ray of that one on Amazon so I still have to watch that one Dexter new blood is randomly over there in that spot but like I said other than than that though i'm not really seeing anything else in here today it doesn't look like there's any new indie stuff unless they didn't put some maybe some of the stuff out if there was any other newer ones like they would be in this spot i don't see anything else really here today though as far as i can tell and i don't really think there's anywhere else to look for random movies in here because they, they kind of got rid of some of the stuff that they used to have. They used to have some more down here and they have a couple ones down here but that's mainly just like the sort of random TV stuff that they usually eat like the same stuff. But other than that though, nothing really else different as far, like I said, as far as I can tell. What's this down here? I see some random, I never saw this one, this like gift set for SpongeBob. This is like, I guess a repackaged one of like the first and second seasons. So this is like the really old original DVDs from back in the day maybe? I don't know, but like, either way it's a repackaging of them. And I don't know if they've always had the had you know carry the Rugrats complete series in here, but other than that though, like I said that seems to be all the different things here that I see today. Into Best Buy we go. Well, in here today, though, there's a couple things, other things that came out that I totally forgot about. Like, they have the Hunger Games here, the only Best Buy collection here of all the movies in the Steelbook collection here. Every time I think of these two, I think of the Diversion series and how they never finished it. How there was, like, it was left as a terrible cliffhanger that we we'll never have the ending to. Uh, but these Hunger Games movies, I tried to rewatch them again recently. And they're movies that I feel like I really can't look at them again for some reason. They also have in here a Steelbook here for Dexter here, uh, The New Blood. That one's $34.99 for that one. I had no idea they were going to have a Steelbook for that one. Sorry, I'm trying to talk over all this really operated music in here they also have dexter new blood the standard edition here for 29.99 for that one and then also over here though i saw a couple other things like they have nightmare alley so if you guys wanted to get the 4k they have the 4k here for 29.99 the standard blu-ray for 24.99 uh, also though other than that though mixed in here i don't see anything else Oh, no, they do have the Godfather Trilogy. So they have the 4K here for $72.99 for that one. And then the Blu-ray edition here for $38.99. But other than that, though, here, that seems to be all the different things here as far as I can tell, though. So anyway, though, guys, that was all for my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also in the comments below, though, let me know anything new that you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or, or 4K today. Uh, also, though, too, let me know what you guys thought of the Amityville Karen trailer. Like I said, I'm going to have a link for that below. And I'm also going to be posting on social media and everything, too, when uh, SRS Cinema has the limited edition Blu-ray for sale. So you guys can get that one. And like, it's going to have a 40, uh, it's a 35-minute behind-the-scenes documentary on there. Uh, and there's going to be a commentary track on there as well. 
because I still have to do the commentary for that one in the next week or so. But yeah, really excited for you guys to see that movie. That I, I'm so happy with how the film turned out. And also, like I said, we're now at the last five days for Mistletoe uh, Massacre, the new film that I'm co-directing with Lauren Francesca. So if you guys are interested in getting any of the perks on that movie, like I said, there's producer perks on the project, uh, special thanks credits, uh, credits to have your uh, channel shown in the film, uh, parts to be a video blogger or a newscaster, which are ones you guys can film from home, all kinds of stuff like that on there. But thanks again, guys, for all the support and everything. Now stay tuned for the brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video, and this is a movie which I have watched throughout the years so many times, and this is a brand new a 4K edition of the film in a steelbook, and this is the film uh, Robocop here. Now, now, keep in mind, though, this edition here only includes the 4K copies of the film. It includes the director's cut as well as the theatrical cut, but it only, like I said, includes the 4K versions of the movie. But I've always loved this movie, and this is one of those movies, too. Uh, I remember when I first saw all the director's cut it was like uh, this i think it was like back on the day of like early dvds i think it was criterion might have released it and it was probably one of the earliest like goriest things i remember seeing for like the difference between like the r-rated version and how in insane the the gore and everything was in the uncut version of this movie it is a great movie though about a, if you never have never seen it i feel like it's one of these films that everyone has seen but if you haven't or don't know what it's about it's about a cop who was get who basically is shot and killed uh terribly killed by these these um this whole gang and and he ends up being brought back to life uh, in a robotic form. And basically, his mind is... Very li little remnants of his mind remain. But he kind of can remember some things and fragments and stuff like that. But he's basically... The only thing that's left of him really is his head. Uh, his head that's inside of the skull and, and portions of his brain and stuff like that. And basically, he's become now a crime fighter cop. A robotic cop who's going around uh, and killing uh, the bad... You know, basically stopping the bad guys. And, you know, basically trying to... Uh, basically kind of stop all the crime and stuff because crime in, in where this movie takes place has gotten so out of control they need Robocop to, to save the day this, like I said if you have never seen it an absolute must watch I love the music in this movie uh, this one has on here like I said the uh, director's cut and it has a commentary track on here with the director as well as the co-writer on here uh, some of the other stuff that it has on here uh, the future of law enforcement creating Robocop and uh, you know an interview on here with the co-writer uh, it has on here uh, Roboprops a tour of Super fan it's a collection of robocop props on here it has some easter eggs on here four deleted scenes uh director's cut production footage raw dailies from from the uh, unrated gore on the film and like i guess it also includes a theatrical cut on here which has two isolated score tracks from the composer's original score and final theatrical mix it has the ed edited for television version of the film which i always love too i love when movies they, they've been including lately the edited for tv versions of the movies i'm hoping we get prom child 2 on uh, blu-ray because it's already been to blu-ray but i'm hoping for like a special edition one where they put the tv version of that movie that that's one of the movies I would love that for. And then um, Summer... Uh, no, what was the other one? Yeah, uh, The Great Outdoors. was an, uh, No, no. Was it Summer Rental or Great Outdoors? Summer Rental was the one where they had a ton of deleted scenes as well in the TV cut. So that would be another one that, you know, uh, Shout Factory or Arrow would be great if they would put uh, those ones out. I'd love to see the uh, TV cuts of those ones because there was a lot of great stuff on those. I'll show you guys, though, a look inside here as well. Here's a look inside the Steelbook. This is a really, really cool Steelbook. I love the back on here. And here's a look, though inside here at the discs and everything but and now here's a look though inside like i said if you guys have never seen this movie it's an absolute must watch really fun movie i always have been a fan though of peter weller as well also one of my favorite movies that he was in was um you know um uh yeah, screamers I, i've always loved screamers so much uh the next one here this is from uh, arrow video as well and this is one i want to let you guys know is available and this is the 4k ultra hd edition here as well and i don't think if this one has been i might, might be wrong but i don't believe arrow has released this one before on blu-ray so i think this is the first time this has ever been out but i might be wrong about this one but this is mary shelley's frankenstein here and this is the one that stars robert de niro and uh, kenneth branich and kenneth branich was the director of the film as well he also directed most recently the um the new Jewel of the Nile movie and Murder on the Orient Express, the, the, the remake ones that, that they were recently. This one has on here, though, the new 4K restoration from the original camera negative by uh, Sony Pictures on here. It has a brand new commentary track on here by film historians, a brand new interview on here with costume designer, a brand new interview on here with a makeup artist, uh, has in uh, Mary Shelley's The Creation of a Monster, a brand new documentary feature on the origins of the evolution of uh, Frankenstein's story on here. Uh, it has on here, though, the... Um, 
what was the other one in here? Frankenstein, a liberal adaption of Miss Shelley's uh, famous story of, for Edison Productions. This is the first, first screen adaption in 2K. So it's a, a movie that was from 1910, which was the first time that they had done anything with Frankenstein. I'll show you guys a little look inside here as well. There's also a booklet in here with some stuff from the you know production stills, stuff about the film, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, the other ones here are ones I will let you guys know were available as well from um, Arrow Video. This is one here called um, To Say As To Dream here. And this one, um, you know, this one has on here the brand new commentary track on here with Japanese film cinema, cinema experts on here, a brand new interview on here with the film's lead, a brand new interview on here with early Japanese film culture of the arts uh, on here by silent film commentator. Uh, it has on here theatrical trailer on here, image gallery. I'll show you guys a look inside here. Uh, as well, but there's also a booklet in here with some stuff about the production uh, and stuff like that as well. Uh, the other ones here, these were two um, martial arts ones here from Arrow Video as well. This one was here, it was called the um, the Eight Diagram Pole Fighter here. Uh, and this one here, this is the brand new 2K restoration from the original camera negative by Arrow um, Films. And this one has on here the original uh, Lossless Cantonese and Mandarin audio tracks on here, optional English su uh, subtitles on here, a brand new commentary track on here by uh, John. Jonathan Clemens, author of Brief History of China, a newly filmed appreciation by cinema, uh, film cinema and historian Tonya Rayans on here. And I'll show you guys a look inside too for this one. Let's just look inside and there's also a booklet as well with stuff about the production and the film and everything. And the other one too, which was another martial arts film uh, from Arrow Video, was one called Come Drink With Me. Uh, this one here. And this one has on here though uh, the um, uncompressed Mandarin and English uh, optional mono audio on here. Uh, subtitles on here. Uh, Tony Ray's historian interview on here. Film historian interview. Uh, interview on here with the co-star on this one, uh, 2016 uh, uh, University of Hawaii um, Q&A on here, uh, as well as image gallery on this one. And I'll show you guys a little look inside here uh, as well. Uh, here's an ad for one of the, I think the Wolfman, I think that's one of the future ones from them. They usually have like an ad in here for future releases from them. And then uh, the next one here, this one is from um, Shout Factory, and this is from their uh, Scream Factory line. And this is a movie here called On the Third Day. This is a creepy movie. This is about this woman that ends up getting into a car accident and she's basically kind of like out in the middle of nowhere. And basically she gets in this car accident and then she kind of wakes up days later, kind of like in this daze and kind of not knowing at all, you know, where her kid is. And it's kind of like there's some sort of a weird sort of character out there, this weird, creepy guy out there in the middle of nowhere that's basically kind of pursuing her and following her. And it's a really, really creepy, slow burn movie. This is definitely one I would recommend you guys check out. Super creepy movie. This one is called uh, On the Third Day here. The next one here, this is from uh, Lionsgate. And it's a movie here called uh, Pursuit. And the, co the cover for this one, I can't, I, it reminds me of another movie and I can't remember what it is. I, I keep looking at it and it like reminds me so much of this other movie. And it might have been something with Katherine Heigl or something, but like the cover, I've never had a cover that like gives me vibes of another movie so much in my life. And I cannot for the life of me figure out what it was. And I, it might have been another Lions Gate release. I just don't, cannot remember what was the movie that looked like this for this kind of a cover. Might, maybe it was Hot Pursuit, maybe. And I'm a little dyslexic too. So like sometimes I like mix things up. So maybe I'm like thinking that too because of Pursuit and I'm just thinking Hot Pursuit. I don't know. But this is a movie here which stars Emile Hurst and Joan, um, and John Cusack. I always want to say Joan Cusack. I don't know why I always, mix up the names and John and Joan I'm always mixing them up and it's always this sort of inside thing that I've always mixed them up all the time uh, but basically though this was a fun movie this is a, a, it's essentially though about Emile Hirsch's character and you know something has happened to um you know, basically his wife is kidnapped he's this guy who was like this hacker and he has to go and try and he was kind of a guy who never really had done anything bad before he just kind of was a hacker and kind of hacked into things but never really did crime or anything like that but basically though because of this, the hacking that he did people have come after him and essentially though it's kind of he has to go and try and get his girlfriend back and it becomes this whole big intense thing about John Cusack kind of coming after him and everything it's a, it's a really like I said very intense movie I've always been a fan of Emile Hirsch too like I always like this stuff, and I love he does quirky out there stuff too, like um, Evening with Beverly Left Lynn, and just like crazy stuff. So I've always been a huge fan of his too. Uh, this one has on here though, behind the scenes on here, as well as a trailer on this one. The next one here, and this is one that I was mainly wanted to watch for Cat Williams. I, I always, Cat Williams is great. Like I always have been a fan, fan of Cat Williams. This is one here called For the Love of Money, and he kind of is playing like a different kind of character in this, I thought. Like, because normally he plays like a certain type of role, but I thought he was kind of playing like a little bit more intense and different than I've seen him, and I 
thought he did a really, really good job in this movie. Uh, and basically, though, this is kind of like about... um. Oh, why am I blanking? It was basically about this one woman who kind of like had gotten out of a certain type of a life and kind of about this crime and everything. And essentially something kind of has happened and she ends up kind of getting to the point where she has to get back into the whole thing. That's essentially what it is. It's kind of hard to explain everything, but I, I really like this. It just kind of is one of these sort of dramas where it's like, uh, you know, crime movies where things kind of, when they start going wrong, when you take one bad decision and then things kind of spiral out, spiral out of control and get worse and worse and worse as they go along. That's essentially what it is. Is it's just like when one thing goes one way, just that one thing sets a whole spiral of everything else going really, really bad. And that's essentially what the movie was about. But really fun movie here. Like I said, this one is called For the Love of Money uh, here. And a really great cast. Like I said, a lot of people were in here, like DJ Youngfly was in here. A lot of people that I recognize from other stuff. But especially, though, like I said, Cat Williams. Always fan of Cat Williams. And the next one I got here is from Paramount. This is one that I want to let you guys know is available. And this is from the Paramount Presents line. And this is a movie here called Ordinary People. And this is one um, which is a film which is directed by Robert Redford. And this stars Donald Sutherland, Mary Tyler Moore, and Timothy Hutton. And I love these Paramount Presents lines because they're in these cases that have like the, the slip cover. And then they open up like this. And then they have inside like the original poster artwork for the movie. And then inside though, they're in the clear case. And then there's always like a quote, some kind of a quote on here or a review or something like that. So there's a quote in here from Timothy Hutton, you know, about Robert Redford, you know, as, as a director. Uh, and, and it also includes a digital copy of the movie as well. But on here, though, feature-wise, this has Swimming in the Rose Garden feature out on here. This has um, New Feeling is the uh, Selective on here feature at, as well as a theatrical trailer on this one here. Uh, the other one here I want to let you guys know was available, and this is from um, Paramount as well, and this is from the, for also from CBS, and this is uh, the, the newest uh, rendition of uh, Dexter, and this is Dexter New Blood. I, I actually watched watched Dexter when you know when the show was originally on I watched it for like the first probably like maybe three seasons or so like it's one of those shows there's some shows where like I kind of like when a certain character is off the show then I kind of like lose interest and like um there was like two characters on the original show that I really lost interest when they were gone like um the one guy who was like Dexter's partner uh, when he was gone, and then especially when Dexter's girlfriend was gone, then I was just checked out. Like, that was, I was, I think either vice versa. That might have been first, and that might have been after. I cannot remember. But that one girl that was, like, the British woman. That, I don't that, then I kind of checked out of the show uh, a little bit. That, I don't know why. I don't know if you guys are like that, too. With, with certain shows, if, like, certain people are out or whatever, you kind of get to the point where you're like, I don't know if I can keep watching this anymore. Or there's some shows where you feel like, Am I going to invest my entire life in this show? Like, you feel like it's going to go on forever. I don't know how to explain that. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. But certain shows that have been like that with me where I'm like, I don't think I can invest any more time <laughs> in this show. Uh, this one has on here, though. Uh, Why Now, Dissecting Dexter, New Blood, Deb is Back, Dissecting Dexter, New Blood, The Kill Room, and All up, out, um, out on the Table. I don't know if there's going to be more seasons of this show or not uh, on here. Like I said, though, this is the newest return of Dexter. And I can't really talk about much without ruining stuff in the original show or like w how the, the original show ended and stuff like that. Uh, the next one here, this is from um, Warner Brothers. They sent over a free copy of this one. Let you guys know that this one was available. And this is uh, the um, complete season set. They They've been doing this now lately. I think they did one uh, last time around that was up to season four. And this is the complete seasons up to season five. And this is uh, Rick and Morty. So this is seasons one to th season five of the show here on, on Blu-ray. And it also includes a digital copy of the show. And it has on here, includes all five seasons, 51 episodes, special feature, has commentaries, animatics, deleted scenes, deleted animatic sketches, behind the scenes featurettes, inside the episodes, directing Rick and Morty, animation challenges, and more on here. But also, though, there is a poster, which is included with this one, and it's a pretty big poster. I'll show you guys, though, that was included with this one as well. And I don't think I've ever seen them in any of the other Rick and Morty releases include a poster, as far as I can remember. And I'll show you guys, though, a look inside here um, as well. Oh, there's also like a little episode guide which says the episodes that are on here and then it also says the features that are on here as well here's a look though at the discs for this one like i said though just only guys know where about that let you guys know that this one was available if you guys were a fan of the show rick and morty this is the newest uh release of the show which is all all the way up to season five of the show the next one here this is from um uh you know from uh, mill creek and this is a i always love these complete series sets like i'm a huge fan of these and this is a show that that was one of the ones that i was not as familiar with as the other shows like i did not see 
too many shows, episodes of the show in the past. So I'm really glad to have this because, like I said, I, this is one I really never saw much. When, when it comes to the actor in the show, I always was a fan of him. Uh, I think my, the, my favorite thing he was ever in was In and Out, and then probably the Mr. Baseball. I think was the other one that he did that I really really liked. And this is a uh, Magnum PI, the complete uh, series here on Blu-ray. Like I said, I love these complete series sets. It's like uh, something to me. I just think it's really cool to have every all of them together like this. And this is all uh, eight seasons of the show. And it has on here though new interviews on here with the composer on here as well as series writers directors and producers it has the rockford connections uh two episodes of the rockfield files features tom, featuring tom Selleck, a uh, flashback featurettes on here and audio commentary so a lot of features on here as well and they like i said they have some new uh, features as well for this release and uh, here's a look though at the discs in here and this is seasons one through seasons um you know five of the show uh no sorry this is seasons one this is season three right here and then right here is, um, and it's also in a hardbound case. It's definitely, the case that it's in is much sturdier than some of the past ones, too. So it's a really great, hard, sturdy case for this one. Because I remember there was a time, too, when some of the complete series sets were in, like, thinner cases. What's cool, too, is, and I bet you would not expect this, inside, they actually have images inside. Which I don't know, has, has that happened a lot before in, um like series sets when like I don't really look inside so that's kind of cool inside there's an image for this one uh, and then we have seasons um three through five here of the show sorry the, the disc is falling out so season three through five and then the last ones here was this this is the last one and then seasons uh six through eight here uh you know as well but like I said just want you guys to know this one was available if you guys are a fan of the show and you now guys can now get the complete series of Magnum PI from uh, Mill Creek on Blu-ray. The next one here, this is one I was really interested in seeing because a friend of mine, Jose Prendes, and I was in two of his movies, The Haunting of Whaley House, and a movie called Blood Brothers, and he uh, wrote this movie. It was called uh, a film called uh, The Legend of La Jorona, and it uh, stars uh, Danny Trejo. And this is basically about a, uh, this family that's going to... Um, basically going to take a trip and everything to Mexico and they basically um you kind of see in the very beginning of the movie though the, the you know the character of the La Llorona that was out in the middle of this kind of swamp kind of woods kind of area kind of comes out of there and like takes these kids and stuff like that and essentially though you know that there's some, something out out in this swamp nearby where this family has moved and right when they get there though uh La Llorona starts coming back and starts kind of taking you know and starts to scare the kid and stuff like that and then weird sort of things start to happen I, I really like this one I thought this has a really like the way this flowed and played out and everything was really good Danny Trejo did a great job in this movie a uh, very fun movie like I said this is The Legend of La Llorona and this is from um uh, Welgo USA another one here from Welgo USA I want to let you guys know is a available as well uh this is one here called the long night and this one here uh stars you know scout Taylor compton uh, if you guys uh was, was fun too is scout Taylor compton is in uh my film that i directed uh screen bloody murder uh, she's in uh in that film as well so i can't wait for you guys uh to get to see uh that one so that was definitely really cool to get to work with scout on that movie uh but this one though is basically though about her going back her character going back to um her childhood uh to her childhood um basically where she grew up and everything and essentially though Right when she starts to get back there, uh, there's really weird sort of things that start to happen. This kind of has like, um, sort of like, I would guess you would kind of say like, um, a race for the devil kind of the feel a little bit in a sense of like this kind of cult thing that's going on when right when they get there, weird sort of cult things start to happen and weird things are going on. There's a lot of weird people that they're seeing. It's a very, very creepy, creepy movie. Like I said, this one here is called The Long Night. This one has on here behind the scenes, director's commentary, a short film on here, as well as a trailer uh, on this one. The next ones here, uh, these ones are all Australian releases, and these ones are all are um, both from uh, from these were from Imprint Films as well as from uh, Via Vision. And the first one here is a collection here, the Odd Couple Collection. This is in this hardbound case. And I love these movies. I I, I, have, I really like the second movie as well. I actually think the second one was the first one that I had seen. And it, I, the reason I like the second movie too is because I felt like it was Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau kind of in their um, their real like grumpy old men stage where I felt like they were amazing. Because when you think about Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon, they were always amazing. They had acted forever. They were great actors. They did a lot of characters actor actor work but when they got older and they became older men and they were in grumpy old men i feel like that's when they totally shined like they i don't know what it was they were just so amazing when they the older they got and how good they were and you look at walter Matthau too uh you know look in um dance the menace i mean like he steals that movie he is so incredibly good they i mean like no one has come along uh to replace jack lemon walter Matthau. i can't think of any older people or anything like that that are 
in even any way close to as good as both of them were. I mean, they were amazing. Uh, and these, these were these basically these two guys that really didn't get along and kind of had to deal with each other. And they have to come back together for a wedding for the sequel. These are such fun movies. Uh, and th but it has on here, though, I'll like, go through what they have on here. Uh, on The Odd Couple, it has a... Um, in the beginning featurette, Mortal Laugh Down, Jack Lemon featurette, uh, Memories from On Set featurette, Inside the Odd Couple, The Odd Couple, uh, uh, The Odd Couple, a classic featurette, Isolated Audio Track featuring Neil Heffin's score, Theatrical Trailer. On the second one, it has uh, Two Grumpy Men directing uh, Odd Couple 2, uh, which has an interview on here with the director, and it's a brand new interview in 2021. Uh, it has a Jack Lemmon, Americans, Every Man, 2006 documentary, Walter Matthau, Diamonds in the Rough, 1997 documentary, sorry, 1996 and 1997 documentary. I, I remember they used to do like documentaries like that back in the day. There was even like a series of them they released on DVD. And then they also have the Odd Couple television series and they have, um, classic episodes of this series. I think it's like a handful of ones on here. So that's really cool too. I actually remember seeing episodes of this show back in the day. You don't see this one on syndication very much and there's definitely not been a Blu-ray of that. So that's very cool that there's a blu-ray of this one here uh as well and the other one here from um imprint films is the um Brad bad news bears this is i think this is the third sequel in the series uh was it the third one that might have been the one they go to J japan maybe this was the second one and this is the bad news bears um breaking training like i said i don't remember if this is the second or third one i think it was actually the second one but this one has on here a commentary track on here with the director uh as well as a commentary track on here with film historian and a theatrical trailer on this one and here's a look though inside here at the discs and everything for this one here uh as well and the next one I got here is from Full Moon. This is also one of their um, Moonbeam releases. I'm so glad they've been releasing these ones on Blu-ray. They still have the third one to release, but like little by little, they've been going through the whole catalog of Moonbeam f of titles. And I I grew up watching these movies, so that, I know they have like the there was like a Jack Kirby or some kind of a series too. They have to release there when there was like a bunch of episodes. I know that one. I haven't they haven't started doing all of those, and they probably could put those on Blu-ray in like a collection or something. Those are ones I hope they haven't forgotten about about because those I think a lot of people forgot about those ones but this is a uh, prehistoria 2 and this is one uh that I, I i love this series as a kid and so i'm really glad these ones are starting to come out and this is basically like the um the pre the dinosaurs end up by accidentally getting shipped to this kid with these raisins and this like this real rich like richie rich kid has the dinosaurs and stuff like that but they're really fun movies about these tiny little dinosaurs but if you have never seen them though they are really worth watching uh the next ones here these are all from um, gravitas ventures and these are ones i just want to let you guys know these ones are all available and this first one is called the necromancer and this one um this is basically though this is all set out in the woods and, and the forest and everything and this is the black forest in germany it's this real like basically this army troop and I, I can't remember what year it's supposed to take place i think like the 1800s or something around that vicinity of time and basically they're out there and, you know they're out there you know with the enemy but at the same time the enemy is also something else out there there's some sort of this creature type thing out there so it becomes where they have two different things they have to look out for the actual enemy and then this new enemy which is this kind of creature out there and it's a very intense uh you you know, movie about, like, I guess if you like those kind of movies about, like, creatures out there and, like, war type of ones when you kind of combine, like, a dog soldiers kind of thing like that as well. Uh, the next one here, this is from uh, Grouch Adventures as well, and it's a movie here called Clowning. This is about a guy, though, who's, like, business kind of falls apart. He has, like, this lip balm business, and it's, like, he's not making any money, and he's having problems, and he's owing people money, so he kind of has to figure out what he's going to do. So he ends up kind of taking the, the job of doing this clown business, when he kind of goes, like, does a clown for parties and, like, these this weird type of clown thing. But essentially, though, it it ends up becoming this bad thing because he ends up having a situation happen dealing with his suitcase and this whole mis miscommunication thing and mis mistaken identity type thing and all these kind of things that go wrong when then he has people coming after him and it becomes this absolute like absolute nightmare uh, really fun movie uh, the next one here is from Grouches as well it's a movie called I Gilbert and I always love the um, director the actor who directed this was Adrian Mart um, Martins and he stars in the movie as well and I've always been a fan of that guy he's a really great character actor he was in like Piranha three double d and lots and lots of stuff but he directed this one he's basically like it's a very very um sad movie about this guy who's not really very happy not you're kind of depressed and stuff like that he, he kind of like lives kind of in his own sort of fantasy world he doesn't have any luck with women and all these type of problems and basically it's kind of like him going through this sort of fantasy of his life and stuff it's like i said it's very sad very 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 well acted and i i thought it was definitely worth checking out here just like i said just a sad sad movie though uh the next one here uh this is from gravitas as well it's a movie here called non-living and this is another very 
sad movie about this uh, family, you know, this couple who's, they lost their son and they were kind of going back to the house to kind of go through his belongings and kind of figure out what they're going to do and kind of pack up the house. And because of it, like, you know, things are kind of falling apart in their lives and their marriage and everything too. But then at the same time, they discover this letter that kind of has this game that the son had left, like kind of like almost like this kind of like, um, kind of like a hint game. And it's kind of like they kind of are having the struggles if they want to do it. Um, and because, you know, their son is gone, but it's like at the same time they want to do this and they feel like they can get close to their son in a way by doing this. As I said, it's a very, very sad movie, but really well done. It's called Non-Living. The next one here is one, uh, call, and this one was kind of hard for me to, to watch. I, I don't, I can't really watch a lot of stuff that deal with PTSD type stuff too much, to be honest. Uh, but it's a movie that called uh, Hurt. So I can't really explain too much about this. But basically, though, it's a um, woman who went through a lot of things, and then there's a mask killer, and they go to kind of like a haunted hay ride, kind of a haunt type thing. And then, you know, there may be someone coming after her, but at the same time, it's dealing with her own grief and stuff like that. But this is a movie here called uh, Hurt. And the last one here from Gravitas Ventures is one here called Come On In. And this is basically, though, uh, this is hard to explain, but this is a guy who's like this artist, and he's kind of like, he keeps on having like these sort of weird sort of visions, and he's kind of, it's one of those situations where he's almost feeling like his life is starting to kind of crumble around him, and he's kind of trying to figure out exactly how to handle it. He's like basically having all these mental kind of issues that are coming into play at the same time while he's trying to continue to, you know, be successful with his art and stuff like that, but it just keeps on going to this weird what's going on. It is a very, very intense, this movie about this very uh, serious artist, but where things just kind of go in this really crazy direction. The next one here, these ones are all from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, some really fun releases here. And this is one, I always remember like, hearing about this movie. And I'm so glad this is now out on Blu-ray. It's a movie here called Reform School, School Girls. And I remember, like I said, I always remember hearing about this one back in the day, like all the time. And I don't think it had ever come out in America before, as far as I can remember. Maybe there was a DVD back in the day, maybe. I don't know, though. But it's kind of about, like, um, in a juvenile detention center for these teens. And basically, they have to try and survive there. And it's like this bad woman who like runs the place and she's like crazy it's kind of you know they made a lot of these kind of um you know women's in prison movies and stuff like that back in the day but they're always fun movies this one was a little bit later this was 86 because they started doing some of those ones even earlier than that uh probably like i think 80 and stuff like that some of those prison ones they did like some of those nazi exploitation ones which were say since essentially the same exact idea that they kind of changed a few things around back in the day because they, they made a lot of those type of things back then uh this one has on here though extended making of um uh it has a documentary which has interviews with the cast and crew on here, inter uh, th um, interview with the theatrical poster, um, the, the, oh, sorry, the theatrical producer on here. It uh, has um, uh, video footage from the play Woman Behind Bars, original theatrical trailers on this one. The next one here, this is a double pack here, which has two different movies, Hard Rock Zombies and Slaughterhouse Rock. Both of these were really fun movies. Uh, Hard Rock Zombies, though, is a, one of those really wacky kind of things about this band that gets, like, killed. Uh, because, like, basically, like, they, they want to do this experiment and they get like electrocuted and they get brought back to life as like these zombies. It's a really, it's one of those movies where like they, they were just purposely, I think, trying to make certain things weird, as weird as they possibly can. This can be fun and it's a very fun, super, super weird, weird movie. Uh, but on here, like I said, it has both movies and it's a double uh, uh, pack here as well. And it's also reversible. So you can kind of pick which movie that you like better. So like um, one is Hard Rock Zombies and then you can technically switch it to Slaughterhouse Rock. So like if you'd rather, you know, kind of just have the Slaughterhouse Rock poster, you could technically do that. And then, um, and they, but it says on the side though, both of the movies though. So you could still, if you would rather it be that cover. But it has on here though, feature wise, I'll go through some of the stuff that it has on here. On uh, uh, Slaughterhouse Rock, it has a... Um, Brand new 4K scan on here. Interview on here with the cinematographer. Uh, interview on here with Tyler Heiler on here. Interview with act with some one of the other actresses. A theatrical trailer on Hard Rock Zombies. It has a 2K scan for original 35 millimeter uh, archival elements. Uh, Never say die. A making of documentary on here. Uh, popcorn farts and low budget cheese. A feature with special effects and artists on here. Uh, so lots of different stuff on this one here as well. Like I said, uh, the double feature here. This is another double feature here as well. And this is one that has Schizoid and X-Ray. Uh, and these were another really intense movies. The one had um, Bill Mosley in it as well. Was that the... Um, was Bill Mosley in 
I think he was in the one. Am I wrong about that? I'm, I'm bringing that up. I think he was. Maybe, maybe I might be wrong about that. I thought he was, but I think I might have been thinking of another one uh, right now. But that the one was in like a hospital and stuff like that. But these were really, really fun ones. I haven't got to look back on these ones again because uh, I watched these ones years ago uh, when they had, I think they came out from uh, Shout Factory, uh, but when they did uh, one. But these are now the 4K ones. So these are 4K editions of the films as well. So it has a the 4K as well as the Blu-ray copies of the movies as well. But it has on here, though, uh, and I really love that Vinegar Syndrome is doing these 4K releases. And stuff too where they would never get 4K releases otherwise, and I'm so glad to see this happening. Uh, but it has on here, let's see some of the stuff that are on here. 35mm um, X Restoration on here, uh, and then the Blu-ray contains both films as well as the special features on here. A brand new documentary on here with the writer-director. Uh, on here, some brand new interviews on here. So lots of features of this one here as well. This is one from Vinegar Syndrome's partner label, which I'm really glad they put out a Blu-ray of. There was, there was, I think it was only on DVD before. And now this company, ETR Media, is putting out it on, put it on, on Blu-ray. This is an excellent documentary called Scream My, um, uh, so, sorry, Scream My Nightmare on Elm Street. So it's called Scream Queen My Nightmare on Elm Street is the title. So sorry, Scream Queen My Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is a documentary on, you know, um, Mark Patton, you know, who was the star of Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. And, it, you know, it, it's a this is a great documentary, but it's basically, though, all about how the writer of um, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 put in there stuff in there. They kind of like, he was make, sort of trying to make the main character character at gay in the film, but he kind of didn't want to make that pub. It wasn't public in the script, but it was it was implied. It was very much implied, and in this documentary, the director, the writer admits that he kind of was implying that and really going for that in there with these hidden things that he kind of put in the script and everything. But the the what happened though was Mark Patton, uh, who was the actor in the film, was gay, and he basically kind of has always blamed this movie and because of what people have said about, um, you know, uh, Nightmare on Street 2 on him not having, you know, getting work and kind of getting blacklisted and stuff like that because of that. It's a really interesting documentary. It's really, really well done. Uh, and I remember hearing, you know, you know, interviews and stuff like that about Mark Patton had talked about in the past, but it's, you know, seeing that, you know, just explained and everything was really, really well done. And it's also just deals with fandom and all that stuff as well. And there's lots of different interviews on here, you know, interviews with, um, you know, Robert England in here, Marshall Bell, Clue Gulliger on here, but great documentary. It has on here, though, a commentary track on here, uh, Backstage with the Screen Queen, Bedtime Story with Mark Patton. Um, it has a, a Split Second by Skeleton Head music video on here, uh, original Fantastic trailer on here. There's also a booklet in here, uh, you know, as well. But like I said, great documentary. If you guys have not seen this one, definitely would be one I would recommend you guys check out. And the next one I got here is from Vinegar Syndrome as well. And this is also from their partner label called, um, what's it called? S Saturn's Core is the name of the company. And this, they've been releasing from this line a lot of like shot on video and stuff like that. They did like Duck of Carbon High Massacre, I believe they released. They've been doing a lot of stuff. And I, I love, I don't know, I, I love that they've been, um, to see these kind of movies getting put out on Blu-ray. I'm hoping maybe what we'll see on Blu-ray now, seeing stuff like this, like a super special edition of like Witcher Massacre or Cannibal Camp Out or some of those ones too. I think that'd be really cool, especially video violence. That'd be one I, I feel like they, they could do like a really cool special edition for. Uh, and I, I love video violence. The second one wasn't as cool, but the first one was amazing. But this is one here called Back Road, um, Backwoods Marcy. And this is basically though about like, um, it's kind of a weird woman out in the middle of the woods kind of being patrolled by these weird type of like sort of like killer out there. It's, it's, it's hard to explain what was, what was going on in this one, but it's like this really fun shot on video movie. Uh, it's just, it's really, really fun. Like I love these shot on video movies. It has tons of features on here too. It has like a bonus movie on here from 1995, which is a 73 minute film, commentary track on here, blooper reel. Uh, so lots and lots of stuff on here. Original archive, VHS cut of the movie. So like they fully, the super, you know, decked out special edition for the movie as well. The other one here is from, uh, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome. And this is from their partner label, Altered Innocence. This is the one I want to let you guys know was available as well called Shop Stop Zamella here. Like I said, this one, you guys know that this one was available. And this one has on here a behind the scenes featurette, two photo galleries, theatrical trailer, and other trailers for other, uh, Altered Innocence, uh, releases, uh, as well. The next one here, this is one I want to let you guys know was available 
available. And this is um, from uh, Worldwide Multimedia. And this is uh, 60 Seconds to Live. And there has been a couple of these ones in the past uh, and called 60 Seconds to Die. Basically, uh, uh, in this one, uh, me and Danny both have a short that we made on here. So if you guys want to see me and Danny's short on here, uh, basically his the short on here that we did was him stalking and killing me. And essentially, what this is, is... Um, a one minute long and within six, within one minute somebody ends up dying so each short film is a minute long and it's them dying within one minute of and that, and so within that same amount of time they have to die so that's basically what it is lots and lots of um familiar directors and stuff like that in the indie horror world, world you see have done stuff in here but really fun like i said I, i'm really glad to have gotten to do a short in that one uh, the next one here is one i will let you guys know is available and this is from um this is from Ronan Flicks. And it's also, it's funny, it also says Quiver Distribution, too. I guess Quiver is part of it as well. That's interesting. And this is um, a movie here uh, called, uh, you know, this is from the 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 um the director of the forbidden zone and the writer of freeway and i i love freeway freeway i cannot believe the original freeway you know i have lost my neck how did it go see i may have lost my neck but i haven't lost my smile something like that that reason for those wounds fez in that movie i always love but um this is a, a really fun movie here uh was cause it has casper van dien in it uh called modern vampires and this is from like i said also from ronan flicks and this one has a brand new 2k scan on here from of the director's personal film print it has a brand new introduction by richard elfman richard elfman was also you know danny elfman's brother uh it has a commentary track on here with richard elfman and casper van dien behind the scenes featurette as well as a theatrical trailer uh, on this one this is one here from um uh this is from what was the company for this one uh, from unearthed films and this is a movie i always remember when i first saw this one back in the day i remember how like intense this one was about just basically these two people they were like up for the same role and they're going and like t basically beating themselves and like attacking each other and it's just this absolute intense thing about this like almost like a cat fight that goes on through the whole movie and it's called 2ldk and i remember back in the day like seeing this one when this first came out and like it's like 2005 or something. No, I don't remember exactly how long. No, 2002. Whenever I first saw this, I remember really loving this movie. But this has on here a comedy track on here, a making of uh, on here, uh, Tokyo International Fan Fantastic Film Fest interviews, premiere screening interviews, uh, dual production briefing, video message for the theater to audience. Uh, this one here as well, a uh, photo gallery and a theatrical trailer on this one. The next one here, these ones are all from, um, uh, these are all from um, Viavision as well. Uh, and so I probably should have showed these ones when I showed the other ones, but I showed them now. <laughs> but these are also from Viavision. I, I put them in the wrong order. But uh, there's so, so I knew there was some more from them. But these are other Australian releases. And this is one uh, I'm so glad, too, that this has been starting to come out now and getting releases. Because this is like my favorite movie of all time and probably in the top ten. I really can really admit that with this movie. Because it really has inspired me so much with just my weirdness in life in, in general. <laughs> and this is Drop Dead Fred. And you guys know I've talked about this movie a lot. Like, I, I, I think it's one of the few movies that, like, there are movies where I can obsess with just because I literally love everything about it. This is one, uh, you know, probably like Ernest Goes to Camp, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, uh, Troll 2, like certain movies that I just love everything about them, that you just love the movies. You know, they may not be the greatest movies of all time. But they're like, you love them. You love, you watch them again and again. Dropped it Freddy's one of those movies. Like ever since I first saw this movie as a little kid, really little kid, I absolutely love this movie. Basically though, it's about Phoebe Cage's character dealing with, um, her, you know, her fiance, uh, Tim Athens character is, you know, was cheating on her and she basically found out about this whole thing and kind of spiraled her, her into like this sort of a depression state where she kind of didn't know what she was going to do in her life and kind of wanted to move back with her mother and all these kind of things. And then she basically goes back to stay with her mother and she opens up this um uh jack in the box and and years ago when she was a kid she had an uh, imaginary friend who was dropped at fred and she put the uh, dropped at fred got put into a, the uh jack in the box the mom like put him in there and said he's hidden away you're never going to get him back and all this stuff and basically she goes back to the house unleashes drop dead fred her imaginary friend now he's back and kind of he tries to take over her life and fix it but yet at the same time he's messing things up but it is an amazing movie if you've never watched this movie please 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 watch it i mean it's just it's great it has on here though a comedy track on here with the director uh a feature conversation with the director and producer uh has um on here interviews on here with um uh, so the producers and the directors um interview on here with the actress who played the mother 
uh, interview in here with the director of photography, deleted and extended scenes on this one here as well. The other one here is a show, uh, which is one called um, Gary and Shellen's Adventures, Joe 90, the complete series. And I think this was from the same people that did, there was a number of these kind of puppet shows they did back in the day. And these were kind of what inspired like um, Team America, these type of shows. And this is one that I don't think I had seen this one before, this particular one. Case always gets like stuck like that, but I don't think I had seen this particular one uh, before. But this one has on here though a lot of different features. This has um, character biographies, information files, warning sequence footage, uh, or orthodox so locations on here, original artworks on here, uh, merchandise gallery, original end title sequence is on here, a behind the scenes photo gallery. I love the 90s trailers on this one here as well. The other one here is the complete series of the show, The Oath. Like I said, one of you guys know this one was available as well. If you guys are a fan of the show, The Oath, this is a complete series here of, of the show here. And the last one here is one of the late days you know was available. This is from uh, MVD. This is one called Where Are You, John Bennett? Uh, sorry, where are you? No, is it J, J? Sorry, where are you, Jay Bennett? Here, and this one has on here uh, Ken Cooper interview, Billy Bragg interview, Jay's mom reven remembers deleted scenes, ketchup, ketchup, and more ketchup. Q and A with the directors, world premiere, tribute concert, concert, and more on this one. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, subscribing. I'll see you guys later. Bye.